Good morning, everyone. Well, um, you may have been following uh, the the OT drama where um, Arena Tamariki staff are trying to censor what I've put up on my YouTube channels. Um, completely missed all the other platforms, but they're just going after those ones. So they've been dealt with. Um, but it seems to be the the thing this month for some reason. I don't know why. Um, now I've got an email from the Broadcasting Standards Authority and this is in regards to two or three videos that are up um, to do with my TBNZ complaint to the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Uh, I've been keeping everybody fully informed step by step what's going on. Um, that's what I consider transparency and accountability. Um, however, um, from not only you wouldn't believe it, Glenn Scanlon, um, the Chief Executive Officer since 2020 of the Broadcasting Standards Authority, who I think Buck is pissing off in June next month, um, back to Radio New Zealand. Um, he got in contact with me, and I'll read you what he says. And this was on Monday, May the 9th at um, 11.41. I got a response. Uh, I got this email from him two days ago. And it says, Dear Mark, I hope you are well. Don't actually think he gives a fuck whether I'm well or not. Um, I am getting in touch as it has been brought to my attention that you recorded and posted on YouTube a conversation with your case manager. Sorry, whose case is it? Mine. I'm a party to the communications. I have every right to share that information and my opinions about it. Um, Grace Tong, and that you've also been posting details of BSA correspondence relating to your complaint. While the conversation itself was positive, this is a breach of privacy and is not acceptable in the midst of a complaints process. Well, I don't really give two flying fucks what you consider acceptable or not. Um, we wanted to give you an opportunity to take these videos down before we approach YouTube to have them removed. Really. So you can make a little privacy complaint while you're acting as a Chief Executive Officer in your public capacity where you have no expectation of privacy at all. Hmm? Again, the people you complain to also appear to have problems with um, transparency and accountability. Moving on, um, <clears throat> please let us know whether you are willing to do this and we will hold off approaching YouTube until Friday. So generous. Um, I have also instructed the team that in the future they are to deal with you in writing only. Yours sincerely, Glenn Scanlon. Well, that would be if I rung up and said who I was, then no doubt there's some shit list you've got somewhere, so everybody knows who not to accept calls from. If this is the way you behave, Glenn, think fuck you're leaving. Generally don't give out my name, or I might give out my first name, and that may be correct or not. It's not like I'm under oath when I'm talking to anybody on the phone. I could say I'm Gundy if I wanted to. Um, so, yeah, in, anyway, um, the, my response to Glenn... Um, I gave back to him at 1 o'clock in, in the afternoon. Okay, sorry, 1.09 I sent it to him on May the 9th, Monday. And I say, hi Glenn, colitis is playing up, but other than that, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Thank you for getting in touch with me regarding the exercising of my rights under New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990, Section 14. You are correct in stating that I recorded my call with Grace Tong as I do with every state servant or government agency representative. Yes, the conversation was positive. If it was negative, it generally gets a greater attention from the various platforms I publish content on. You claim it is a breach of privacy. Please explain how. That's one question Glenn hasn't answered. Um, what expectation of privacy does Grace or any other employee of a government agency have when acting in the public in, in their public capacity? That's the second question that he hasn't answered. Um, are you legally trained, Glenn? Third question he hasn't answered. 
Um, perhaps you are aware that the Privacy Act 2020 applies to agencies and the IPPs listed in Section 22 of the Privacy Act 2020 do not apply to individuals such as myself or do I look like an agency, Glenn? Yep, it's the same freaking question I was asking um, that bird Sonia at OT. Um, where are we? Whether you deem my exercising of my affirmed rights as acceptable is of no consequence to me. There are numerous things I deem as unacceptable which you may deem perfectly fine. And as you are neither my wife or parent, what you class as unacceptable or not does not concern me in the slightest. Do you get that, Glenn? Um, perhaps it is accountability or transparency that you consider unacceptable. I would not know nor care. Thank you so much for your generous offer to comply like a good boy and take the clip down before you contact YouTube. That offer is declined. Okay, so nah. Um, and please don't wait till until Friday. There is no time like the present, so don't waste time. Contact them today. In fact, do it this minute. If it makes you feel that threatening me with contacting SpewTube has any effect, it doesn't. Um, so are you saying that if I ring the BSA out of the blue and choose to remain anonymous, that they will not take my call? Um, I will have to check that and see. If you are wrong, expect another clip showing how incorrect you were. Yep. Um, I appreciate everything in writing. Legally, it's far better. And it helps me increase my reading skills. See, they're still not the best. Um, when reading out correspondence for further online content, your email to me today and this response shall also be posted. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. Go team. Because you had told the team not to deal with me. Um, you mentioned YouTube. Are you unaware of the numerous other platforms it is posted on? Given that the clip is only of a phone call, good luck trying to have it removed. This will only ensure that as well as being published on YouTube, along with at least six other platforms you failed to mention, that it will also be mirrored internationally through my other contacts to ensure widespread coverage. Now, unless the BSA has a decision in, relating to, in relation to my complaint against TVNZ, please cease and desist from sending me any further threatening emails or requests. At least, most ignorant people would class it as a threat. Myself, thank you for the laughter. Yes, I am laughing at you. I was. I still do occasionally, just quietly, you know. Don't like the wife to see me enjoying myself too much, you know. Um, if you are claiming I have breached <coughs> privacy, please supply the facts that this is based on and do not expect blind compliance based purely on your factless claim of breaching some delusional expectation of privacy. Seek help or employment in the private sector without public interaction to further such delusions. And I'd like to point out that as Glenny Boy here didn't answer my questions, it's kind of forced me to go and do a little bit more research on him. And I've got some interesting information to show you about Glenn, and but why don't we look at all the other staff members that are there too. Grace, love the photo. Glenn, uh, you look like a bit of a weasel. That's just my opinion. Now, uh, notice a failure to respond within three days will constitute a tacit agreement that Glenn Scanlon of the BSA is aware of his poor attempt to gain compliance from me and claiming I have breached some delusion of privacy and is fully aware that this correspondence alleging breaches of privacy are complete nonsense. Notice all correspondence shall be published on multiple platforms for maximum accountability and transparency of public state servants and services. Warmest regards, Glenn. Have a fantastic day, me. And his response right here, as you can see, it is from YouTube at 1.38pm, so some 29 minutes after I sent him my response. Um, so good on him, didn't waste time, straight in there and lodged a privacy complaint. The issue I have, however, is that it says this is to notify you that we have received a privacy complaint from an individual regarding your content. 
Oh no 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 no! See, I'm the one. The I'm the individual here. Glenny baby, he's the chief executive officer of the Broadcasting Standards Authority. He doesn't get to play as an indiv individual making a privacy complaint. In fact, what he's complaining about doesn't have any of his information whatsoever in it. This publication will do, obviously, um, but this doesn't. And certainly no private information. All information I've got is through publicly available areas. Broadcasting Standards Authority's website, LinkedIn, or LinkedIn, I mean, there's lots of places you can go to for information. Check, just Google their name, and you'd be surprised what comes up. Um, but yeah, so I've responded to this little thing, where he's, he's and he's done this on, this is on the uh, backup channel of mine, plus he's also done it, um, and there you can see the three videos, um, plus he's also done it on the other one as well, let me see if I can find that for you, there. Okay, so he's also done it there too. So, what a scumbag. After getting those two privacy complaints from old Glenn, um, he then sends me this at 4.48 in the afternoon on Monday. Dear Mark, thanks for the fulsome response. It's unfortunate you won't work with us on a reasonable request after you called Grace, recorded her without her knowledge and put it on YouTube. That you say it is on a number of other platforms only heightens my concerns. Oh. We will approach YouTube directly. In the meantime, it's what do you mean we will approach YouTube directly? You already did. You approached YouTube three hours before writing this, so don't make out that you hadn't done it we will approach YouTube directly. In the meantime, it's worth you reading YouTube's privacy policy. It's also worth you reading it as well, Glenn. Furthermore, the Privacy Act does apply to individuals. Oh really? Well, the Privacy Commission doesn't agree with you. See definition of agency, I did, under the interpretations section 7 is what I saw. Um, Definition of agency in sections 4 and 8a. 8a, I'll show you here, where it states that it's an ordinary resident in New Zealand or something to that effect, and that's what it's 8a refers to the classification or what the meaning of a New Zealand agency is, whereas section 7, which is where you go to for the interpretation in this Act, tells you an agency is uh, any person referred to in section 4. It doesn't say anything at all about section 8 whatsoever. And also, um, if you go looking for individual, it also defines that in section 7, which is a natural person but not a deceased natural person. And given that natural person is not defined in this Act, I'm sure it's defined elsewhere in legislation, but, um, you know, I'm a man, a natural person, legal person, those things are all capacities, much like Chief Executive Officer is a capacity. Glenn, the man, is still a dick, as far as I'm concerned, for trying to misrepresent what a person is, or what an agency is, according to the Privacy Act 2020. Okay? So... I'll, I'll show you these, section 4, section 7, and section 8. Make up your own mind. Um, and then it says, you're sincerely Glenn. No, there's nothing sincere about you, Glenn. This is what I sent him back this morning. Uh, good morning, Glenn. As you have failed to answer any of my basic questions, I can only presume you are not legally trained given your poor interpretation of the Privacy Act 2020. Generally, generally, if I am looking for the correct interpretation of legislation, I go to the interpretation section, namely section 7 
of the Privacy Act where it clearly defines agency and individual. There is agency, section 7 of uh, the Privacy Act. It means the person described in section 4. It doesn't say anything about section 8. But nice try to mislead things there, Glenn. Um, the, of course, individual means a natural person other than a deceased natural person. A natural person is not defined in this legislation. And then, of course, we go to what he was trying to say I was. A New Zealand agency has its meaning given to in Section 8. And he was referring to Section 8A. Well, I'd like to point him to Section BX because all of these videos are published under news. Okay? And uh, if something's recorded for news purposes, you should know, Glenn, given that you used to work for, you know, the Clinton News Network and um, The Guardian, you should know, Glenn, you know, did, did you not bring that bit over with you? Are you one of these imports from England? Do you think, like, news agencies have some sort of greater ability than I do? Don't think so. We all have the freedom to say what we want, surely. So, um, you know, and, and again, he's been in this in this news stuff. You know, it's interesting that he works for those sorts of news agencies and then over to a government agency representative. It's it's almost like the federal exchange and senators. Now they all seem to jump from private sector to public sector. It's like one big club, and none of us are in it. As a man, I have the capacities to represent natural and legal persons, and I note that natural person is not defined in this Act. However, for your own benefit, a simple Google search will take you to the Privacy Commission, where it clearly states myself and my personal and domestic capacities are not an agency. However, thanks again for the laughter. It's always nice to wake up with a smile. Um, this, along with all previous correspondence from you, will now be published. Again, on multiple platforms to show how poorly you you um, interpret the Privacy Act 2020 and how you have attempted to mislead myself with your unsolicited advice. Now, I uh, attach a photo there of the Privacy Commission, and right here it says, simple Google search, the Privacy Act applies to any person, organisation or business referred to in the legislation as an agency. Whether it is the public sector or private sector that collects and holds personal information about other people, an individual acting in their personal or domestic capacity is not an agency. Okay? Do you need time to read that and absorb it? I mean, after YouTube turns around and says, nah, we're not going to censor it, or they do censor it, remove it, and I just re-upload it, and I'm more than happy to just keep doing that for as long as I need to. Um, but it's also up on many other channels and other platforms, um, as I freely give them links to them here to help your concerns, because remember he, he had heightened concerns. Um, here are some of the other platforms you missed. And note that... <laughs> The more you attempt to censor my ability to seek, receive, and impart information and opinions, the more the public will see how poorly you represent the Broadcasting Standards Authority. And again, not that he gives a flying fuck, no doubt. He's on his way out. The Broadcasting Standards Authority have already publicised that he's leaving in June. It seems like all these rats are leaving the ship. You know, Ashley Bloomfield fucks off on the 1st of June. This other prick buggering off in June. Hopefully back to his own fucking country. Um, so yeah, and I give him the links to BitChute, to Rumble, and to Odyssey. So he can watch just one of the many clips about the BSA on those platforms. Good luck trying to get those removed. Um, now, see, enjoy your day. P.S. Good luck censoring those links, as you can expect what you were trying to pre prevent the public seeing to only now will be more widespread. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome, Glenn. Now, I mean, if you're interested, this is the Broadcasting Standards Authority's website, okay? And if we look here, it says, BSA recognises contribution of departing Chief Executive Glenn Stallion. Well, Scanlon. Gosh. 
Um, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has announced the resignation of Chess Executive Glenn Stallion. See you later. So sad I missed you. Um, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has announced the resignation of Chief Executive Glenn Scanlon. Authority Chair Susie something or other. See, I've got missing bits on my screen, so I can't see. Um, Susie Stacy, I think her name is. I'm sure we'll look at all the staff soon. Don't you worry. Thanks, Glenn. Not answering my questions, just meant I had to go find the answers myself. Um, says Glenn's leadership has been crucial during a time of significant challenges and change in broadcasting and society. In his time with the BSA, Glenn has overseen a review of the Broadcasting Standards Code Book, really, which in, in nearing completion and worked closely with officials and stakeholders on a review of content regulation. Really, his time coincides with a major upsurge in complaints of the, off the back of COVID-19 and elections here and in the US. This has seen the authority issue important decisions and guidance tackling key issues such as the proliferation of misinformation. And Glenn's just a perfect example of what misinformation looks like when he tries to mislead you into what he wants you to think an agency is, according to the Privacy Act. Doesn't say anywhere here that Glenn's legally trained, but I'll continue. Um, the BSA wishes Glenn every success in his new role as Radio New Zealand's Head of Transition. So you're going over the Radio New Zealand now, are you? It's almost like you're on a seesaw. Private capacity, government agency, private capacity, government agency, but now Radio New Zealand, so I guess they're just slipping you into another role. I hope it's more pay. Clearly you earn it. Which is focused on the creation of the new public media entity. Oh yeah? What new public media entity is that? Um, I'm immensely grateful for the support of the board, uh, for the support of the board, our excellent team and the interactions I have had with broadcasters and stakeholders. I wish everyone the greatest ongoing success and thanks, Skinlon says. Wow, does he just? Um, he will continue to lead the BSA team until his departure in June. Next month, thank fuck for that. Recruitment for his replacement will take place soon. Clearly they haven't found one. The BS, about the Broadcasting Standards Authority, the BSA is an independent crown entity. Go and look up the Bajent case, 1997, about crown liability and um, state entities and, and their liabilities. You're not going to like that one, Glenn. That oversees the Broadcasting Standards regime in New Zealand. It determines complaints that broadcasts have breached standards, undertakes research and oversees development of broadcasting standards in consultation with broadcasters. Follow us on at BSA underscore NZ. Well, I already have and I've already forwarded a few links to their Twitter page for them. Um, and for more information, see link or LinkedIn and the BSA. This is on their website. They're referring me to these places. So, if you're going to go to those places, let's have a look. Here's Glenn. Like I said, bit of a rodent. Um, Glenn brings a wealth of experience in digital broadcast and print media from 2014. He was the head of the news and digital at Radio New Zealand. Well, it looks like he's fucking off back there now, doesn't he? Um, he, let, he led it push to new platforms, content, and a range of partnerships with other media outlets. You ain't partnered with me, buddy. Um, previously, he was the editor of New Zealand's largest news and entertainment website, Stuff.co.nz, owned by the Boucher family. Glenn began his career as a newspaper journalist in 1998, before moving to London and working at The Guardian and Clinton News Network. He was named New, Zealanders, uh, New Zealand's Editorial Executive of the Year for his work at Radio New Zealand in 2017. 
Really? I'm not going to say anything more about that. There he is, in all his glory. But seeing I'm BSA is sending me here to, to look at the staff, let's look at the rest. Now, this is our friend Grace Tong. Hey, Grace. And let's hear about Grace, shall we? Grace joined the BSA in November 2018. In her role as a legal advisor, Grace advises the BSA on complaints, assists in preparing the BSA's decisions, and it's also engaged in a range of strategic projects for the BSA. She has a double degree in law and arts, English literature from Victoria University. Oh, well done, Grace. You were very pleasant on the phone. I ain't got a problem with you, unless you went crying, like a little snowflake, to your chief executive. We also have Helen Cruz, okay, I'm not going to bother reading out any of this bullshit because I've had no dealings with her. You guys can read that for yourself, just pause and read. Uh, there's uh, also Pete Barneo, or, yep, Barneo, he's joined in May 2021, so he's only a freshie. Um, we've got Samantha Carter, um, she joined in also September 2021. Um, we have uh, legal advisor John Edwards. Hey, Johnny. Now, doesn't he look like a friendly guy? Hey, eh? big grin. Um, and he helps prepare, dis prepare decisions. Well, that'll be interesting. And he also started in the BSA. So it looks like there's three new staff in, in uh, 2021. Oh, Omar Shahin. He also joined in October 2021. Gotta wonder why are, why are all these extra new staff coming in? Was there a mass exodus? Or could it be because they were not vaccinated and didn't want to get vaccinated, they had to replace them with cracks, vaccinated idiots instead? Um, I don't know. Legal advisor Maya Boonin joined the BSA. Now, Maya was clever enough not to put her photo in there. Um, so was Omar. But uh, let's have a look. Anyone else? Rebecca Morgan. She was the last of them there. Um, she is the executive officer manager. She's the EOM. Um, uh, prior to the EOM or PEOM or PIOM. No, I won't go there. Rebecca, again, I'm sure is lovely. Never met her. Never had any dealings. I hold no grudge towards anyone I've not had any dealings with that tries to infringe on anything of mine. Um, yeah, and Grace has been lovely too. It's Mr. CEO, you know, exec, ex <laughs> editor of the year in 2017 for Radio New Zealand. Yeah. Um, say no more. And I've already exposed how wonderfully Radio New Zealand actually does interviews and then shows their clips. Remember there was that one when we were protesting, I rang a Tamariki back in 2019 in October across the road from Orangutamariki and we even managed to park right outside the place. I was filming everybody then too. No expectation of privacy in public. And yeah, anyway, I'm not gonna let this keep going on. I'm gonna say bon voyage and um, yeah, you guys can look at it and think about it what you will. Bye all, have a pleasant day. And I'll keep you posted if there's any more shit that starts up.